A warm welcome to your Morbid Today evening news update for Friday, February 4. Government today began the process of amending the Constitution to allow for an opposition party to have the power to nominate two senators even without a presence in Parliament. Following today's official opening of Parliament, Prime Minister Mia Motley revealed that the Constitution Amendment Bill had been read and will be debated in the lower house on Tuesday and in the upper house on Wednesday. The Prime Minister said despite being heavily criticized by the Democratic Labour Party's interim president Steve Blackett for offering that party the opportunity to nominate two opposition senators, she's once again extending the olive branch given what's at stake. This government has chosen to be able to give the party that has the second largest amount of votes in the election the right to be able to choose two senators. And in spite of the fact that the president of the Democratic Party says he needs that from me and I can't offer him anything, let us be very clear. We are thankful to the people of Barbados for the mandate that they've given this government. It is as comprehensive and complete a mandate as possible. But we believe that we have an obligation to our democracy and to the deepening and protection of our democracy to be able to afford the opportunity to the party receiving the second highest number of votes the opportunity to not just appoint two senators, but if persons were reflecting and knew what they were talking about, they would know that what is at stake is not just simply the appointment of two senators. What is at stake as well is the appointment of a number of commissions under the Constitution, from the Electoral and Boundaries Commission that will come up during the course of the next five years, to the various services commission, the Administrative and General Services Commission, the Protective Services Commission, the Judicial Legal Services Commission, and a whole host of others. Now, under the current provisions of the Constitution, Section 75, it would mean that I would have the right as Prime Minister to choose all of those people. And as much as I know that I will do it in fairness and to protect the public interest, I do not believe that I should do so. And to that extent, therefore, we are going to afford them the opportunity to not only be able to choose the two senators, but by extension, to be able to have a say in the appointment of the different commissions. If the Democratic Labour Party fails to accept the two seats, Attorney General Dale Marshall says government will pass on the offer. If that party refuses to either facilitate the consultation or to participate in the consultation, then um, Her Excellency, or the Prime Minister as the case may be, will go to the next uh, party that achieves the next highest number of votes. And when we exhaust that, then unfortunately you must act and it is at that point that you would then rely on your own discretion. Which is the current which is the current situation under section seventy five now. But as I said, I do not feel that this country and I know that the people of Barbados will agree with me that I should not have the right to appoint all five members of the Electoral Boundaries Commission when it comes up. And I should not have the right to just appoint all members of the Services Commission without consulting the other side on um, or the party that got the other votes. This is the right thing to do. And let, let's settle down and do the right thing, give the right example to our people, and recognize that Barbados remains a multi party democracy. But yes, it has chosen to give one party all the votes on two occasions, all the seats on two occasions. But it does not change from the fact that we are a multi party democracy. A historic opening of Parliament today, the first since the island became a republic. President, the Most Honorable Dame Sandra Mason, outlined government's top priorities to transform Barbados. She told legislators the Mayor Motley administration, which secured all 30 seats in the January 19 general election, will build out a stronger nation-state in which all Barbadians have their fair share. President Mason stressed fairness and transparency will be the hallmark of the new government, even as she revealed reforms to step up the national response to crime. My government will bring back to Parliament the Integrity in Public Life Bill, introduce a Freedom of Information Act for increased transparency in governments, implement the recommendation of the Thorn Commission on Local Governance to give the, pe the public more say in national affairs and implement measures to improve ethics and management systems in central government and state-owned enterprises. In the area of citizen security and the justice system, my government has zero tolerance for guns, crime, and violence, and will seek to reform the criminal justice system while simultaneously combating crime at the community level. 
specifically targeting interpersonal violence, promoting strong community bonds, offering classes in conflict resolution, and negotiating skills and making early interventions with wayward youth. A more sensitive justice system intended to rehabilitate the offenders for useful lives is in the process of being developed. Similarly, community-based approaches for domestic violence will be pursued. The government is also expecting a major construction boom in the coming months, and President Mason says Barbadians are set to benefit. Projects for public sector expenditure includes sewering solutions for the Bell, Bellevue, Bailey's Alley, and Chapman Lane. The Spitestown and Constitution River flood mitigation, placing solar panels on the roofs of all government buildings, national road rehabilitation, and training programs for nationals. My government's expenditure on these programs will amount to $122.5 million. Private sector projects are even more extensive and amount to an expenditure of $1.4 billion. Such projects include Inter Alia, Indigo Hotel, the Hyatt Ziva Hotel, Sam Lord's Castle, Sajikor Estates, Discovery Bay Royalton, Margaritaville, Marriott refresh, Refurbishment, Apes Hill Expansion, Sandals Expansion, Crane Expansion, Townhouses at Porters, and a Cineplex and Commercial Center at Welch's St. Thomas. Cumulatively, these projects will generate 5,050 construction jobs of various types and approximately 3,600 full-time jobs. Prime Minister Mia Motley will host Argentina President Alberto Fernandez next Tuesday as the two leaders look at ways to deepen bilateral relations, share experiences in several areas, and discuss matters of mutual interest across the Caribbean and Central and South America. Director of Caribbean Affairs with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Argentina, Gustavo Pandiani, told Barbados today, the trip is simply an effort to help foster greater unity between Buenos Aires and Bridgetown. It's, it's, that's going to be a working meeting. It's not just a courtesy call. That's what I want to emphasize. It's not something to say, oh, nice to meet you, bye-bye. This is a working meeting. We're going to be talking about issues, or, or what, what we can do, what is there for us to work together. Then we have the meeting with the OECS, then we have a, a lunch that Mia is offering to us, and we are very honored to accept. And then we want to we go with the uh, electric uh, vehicle to the west coast, uh, and we will walk the war walk. She will show us the way we are. You are working on uh, those climate uh, matters, right. and the way we are trying to anticipate the problems. So that is basically it. Then he's leaving on Tuesday evening. So it's a 24-hour meeting, I mean, it's a 24-hour visit, but a very productive one. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and keeping this in mind, Make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says there's an overwhelming level of corruption in Trinidad and Tobago, and he's hoping that the Whistleblower Protection Bill 2022 will assist in tackling the problem. Although Trinidad and Tobago's Global Corruption Perception Index, the CPI, has improved by one point, more must be done, according to Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. 
In January, it was announced that this country moved from number 40 in 2021 to 41 in 2022 on the CPI. Bottom line is, Madam Speaker, that the country is and is viewed as being overwhelmingly corrupt. Dr. Rowley said the parliament needs to act. I am not here today, say, Madam Speaker, saying that this piece of legislation, when passed, will put an end to corruption or will change society in a way that corruption will never occur in our society. But what it will do, Madam Speaker, it will afford the society an opportunity to respond in some significant way, to discourage the instances to preserve those who will not participate in corruption. He said enacting legislation to protect whistleblowers has always been a priority of the government. The police said to you, if you see something, say something. This legislation is saying to the population, if you know something, say something, and we as a people will fight corruption and we will be all better off. The bill also seeks to protect persons making disclosures from detrimental action and regulate the receiving, investigating, or otherwise dealing with the disclosures of improper conduct. On the international front, the United Nations says more than 4 million people in parts of Ethiopia are facing critical shortages of water. Hundreds of thousands of children are already severely malnourished in the lowland regions of eastern Ethiopia. For nearly two years, the rainy seasons have failed in the lowland regions of eastern Ethiopia. The UN says more than 4 million people are facing critical water shortages. In recent months, the livestock they depend on to survive have been dying in their tens of thousands. Access for journalists in Ethiopia is restricted. The UN released this video from the Somali region. Hundreds of thousands of people are depending on health and nutrition support from the UN's Agency for Children. The UN says around 200,000 children are malnourished and the numbers are growing fast. At mobile clinics like this one, people can get some help. Vitamin-rich therapeutic feeding paste can help to bring children back from the brink. Most of the people here depend on herding livestock to survive. They have to walk further every month to find water. The pools where the animals drink are a fraction of their usual size. Getting out what's left of the water isn't easy, but it keeps thirsty camels alive. The UN's mobile clinics are helping some, but it says it needs about $30 million to reach all the people who are in need. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.